Uh, are we rolling here? Okay. Everybody should believe in something because when you're put in this position, it's going to test you. And, and they say, well, God's testing you to see, you know, how far you're willing to take this atheist thing. Hey, let's have at it. You know what I mean? I think I was like four years old when I realized there was no God. When I went to catechism, it was, it was silly to me, but I did it anyway. I had to keep my mother happy. And the ironic thing of what is, is that eventually my mother, uh, even, I talked to her, I think about five or six days before she died, and she told me, you were right, there is no God. I would be very upset if there is a God because then I got a lot of explaining to do, but. <laughs> I used to be a registered nurse. That's who I used to be. I, uh, father of three, grandfather, husband. The center of my life is my wife, my kids, my grandchildren. My diagnosis is multiple myeloma, which is a I guess a mutation of protein in my bone marrow, which that's where the tumor grows. It all revolves around the chemo because without the chemo, of course, the tumor grows, the tumor grows, I get lesions and I die. And now I'm on my last leg of the chemo. So everything is focused on that. Trying their best to keep me uh, alive. The hardest thing that I have had to give up in, in this four or five years and going on five years is me. That was the hardest pill to swallow and I miss me a lot. I have changed considerably. Before my diagnosis, I was, uh, uh, like I said, I was one of those type A alpha type individuals. I always wanted things just the way I wanted them. This particular cancer that I have, it's not like one day they're gonna go up to my room and find me dead, no. It's a process. It's a long process, painful process. It's a scary death, but I've accepted that. Not telling your family is a big mistake. You need to let people know so they can start dealing with the process themselves. You know, there's people that are going to be left behind. They're going to continue their lives. I don't fear death. It's, it's just something that's going to happen. The process of death, I don't fear that either. I don't fear the pain that I'm going to go through. It's just another another taste of life. You haven't lived till the doctor puts a needle in you, and I've already said this before, but when they start putting needles in you, into your bone, and then they go into your bone marrow, and uh, some doctors are very good at it, and you feel pain, but yeah, you can deal with it. Then uh, there are some doctors that it's extremely painful. Well, what I do is, this is another favorite place of mine. In my mind, to counteract that, I go to this place, it's a lake. It's in my mind. It's this beautiful lake. When you talk, you can, you, you, you can, it's so crispy, you can cut it with a knife. That place, and it's a big lake. There's a mountain, it's snow-capped, there's pine trees, and I'm fishing. I don't even fish, but I'm fishing, and I pull out this big, beautiful gray with red uh, scales, this big fish. I don't even know what kind of, I thought it was a black bass, but no, because it's gray and has red scales. And I go to this place and I do the same thing over and over. During my transplants, I did the same thing. So those are my favorite places. I don't want to be in pain, uh, but if I have to, I'll deal with it. But. I just don't want to be in pain. I don't want my family to see me in pain because that causes pain to them. And then I don't want to turn into this person that's going to be uh, brutal to them because I just don't. They're, they're good people. They don't deserve that. And it's not their fault or even my fault that I have this cancer. The nurses the nurses at the transplant center, they had this real bubbly plastic type of personality, which they've probably been trained to do that. 
But once they found out that I was no longer transplantable and now I am terminal, there I would sit in a room and they used to come in and talk to me a lot and all of a sudden they just avoided me. They just, which is normal. I mean, we're, we're not in the business in the medical field to deal with the death, the dead. We have to deal with the living or the viable people, so they go towards the viable people. If you're in a profession like we, like I was in, that you, 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 you took an oath to take care of people, which means you don't abuse them, uh, you don't ignore them, you don't, you don't neglect. Three roll. I am rolling. Yes, stand by, and I am rolling. And that's the way it is. July the 29th, 2010. Uh, I love Frida Kahlo because she challenged the times. She was, during these times, women were supposed to be suppressed and Victorian type and proper. And um, bisexuality was like the worst thing that you could, I mean, you would disown your daughter if she was a bisexual or if she dressed like a man. Anybody who challenges just the the status quo to me is, is, is somebody I admire in the artistic world. The day I married my wife is probably the most greatest experience that I ever had. Fascinating person. She's a tough lady, very tough. Uh, without her, I probably wouldn't even be sitting here talking to you. In fact, I know that to be, to be true. And the birth of my children and grandchildren so something inside of you has to say, okay, what is the one thing that, that makes you want to go through this? And not just say, you know what, let, let the cancer take what it wants. When I got diagnosed in February, uh, oh my God, when was it? When I was 48, 49 years old in February, whenever that was, now I'm 53. My granddaughter was born and I, inside of me I said, I just want to be able to hear her talk. That's all I wanted. Then I'm ready for death. That's all I wanted. Well, now she talks. I want my children and grandchildren to, to be happy, to have a good and full life just like I did. Che Guevara inspires me because even though he was going to die, he even had compassion on the man who was going to shoot him. Uh, who, was gonna, who was going to execute him. And he says, why are you scared? I'm just, it's just a body that you're killing. Uh, he, uh, he says something to the effect, uh, wherever we go, whatever we do, if death surprises us, it is welcomed. When you have a cancer that cannot be cured and you're gonna have to deal with it for maybe a year, two years, three years. Closure has already been given to you. This is it, this is the end of it, you know. Get everything done that you can within this time frame because closure is there. Death is the ultimate closure. At life after death, if there is, hey, I just hope they have a barbecue pit, dos equis and cows on the other side.